In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Especially this morning, I would like to share biblical separation. When we say this biblical separation is how to say it is no easy to follow everyone. You will see. The biblical separation is the recognition that God has called a believer out of the world and into a partner and corporate purity in the midst of simple culture. And then biblical separation is usually considered in two areas. We see number one is a partner and number two is a glacial digger. You see in the Old Testament, God commanded the Israelite to keep themselves separate from the healthy nation. We see that Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 11, it is very clearly mentioned about how to separate from the healthy nation. Let me see in verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, which you go to process, you see, to process the land and has catch up many nations before you. You will see the many nations, the first nations had to die. Second, we see Rikasaj, Dat, Amorai. And then fourth, we see Kadanai. Next, we see Parasai and Hebai and then Jebusai. These seven nations greater and mighty than you, the way God command the nation, the people of Israel, is to process the land. God is going to catch up this many nation before them. We see in verse 2, And when the Lord your God delivered them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall not make covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. God wants them totally separate with a believer. In verse 3, Nor shall you make mad with them. You shall not give your daughter to your son, and not to take their daughter for your son. And God doesn't allow to marry those people also. God wants them to separate with those people. And the next in verse 4 we see, They will turn your son away from following me to serve other God. So the anger of the Lord will be arose against you and destroy you suddenly. God wants them to marry with their own people. Because if they marry with another, let me say, unbeliever, healthy nation, they will serve other God. You see, Ten Commandments also. You must worship only the Lord, only the Lord, not other God. To serve only God. In verse 5, but thus you shall deal with them, you shall destroy their altar and break down their scar pillar and cut down the wooden image and burn their carp is made with fire. God want them to destroy their altar, not to worship their God. God wants them to destroy their altar. That's what God wants to be separate from the hidden nation. In another page, we see in verse 7. And the Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. And for you were the least of all people. And in verse 7, we see the Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you, because you 
were more number than any other people. For you were the least of all people, but because of the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your father, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. The way we see in this verse 6, 7, and 8, the commandment of God is agents. We see. God warned them in verse 9, we see. Therefore know the Lord your God. He is God, the faithful God, who keep covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandment. God warned them, the people of Israel, to spray from the nation and keep and love his commandment. And he pray, he repay those who hate him to their faith and to destroy them. He will not slack with him who hate him. He will repay him to his faith. Yes, so in the last verses, in verse 11, we see, Therefore you shall keep the commandment, the statutes, and the judgment which I command you today to serve, to observe them. It will see in the Old Testament how God commands his people to keep themselves separate from the healthy nation. If they are not separate with healthy nation, they will serve the other God. That's when God wants them to separate themselves. That's in, the, in verse, verse 11. To observe them, keep commandment, keep the statutes, and the judgment which I command you today. Let me see a good example in the lives of Daniel. It's a personal separatism. It's a personal separation. It involves individual commitment to ungodly standard of behavior. You will see Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Resolve not to defy himself with the road of food and wine. Daniel, he always observed himself to whom he is serving. There's he he <coughs> resolved not to defy himself with the rosary foot and wine in the Old Testament. He practiced personal spiritism. And then you will see again in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 17. But I just put on here in verse 14. You will see in New Testament also, do not be an equal job. Together with unbeliever, for the fellowship has righteousness with lowliness, and what communion has life with a darkness. If we see in this scripture passage, there are several imperatives here. Number one is, be ye not an equally job. It's a very important one. Second point we see, come out. Even in, your, even in the Old Testament, God command his people to come out. That's what he all destroyed who are healthy people. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 7, seven nations. God catch out all the seven nations. And number three, be ye separate. We see again separation. Not only separation, in number four, we see touch not. God doesn't allow to touch also. We see four points are there. It is imperative. And we see again in Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Apostle Paul, he wrote to the church, he wrote to the Roman, but put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill it lacks. 
it will see in the second part here, make no provision for the flesh, but fulfill it lack. And then, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We we'll see it again, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, to avoid every kind of evil. As we are Christian, as we are the people of God, we must be avoid every kind of evil. That's why God wanted to separate with worldly things. And in Romans chapter 14, verse 5, you will see again, one person extreme one day above another, and another extreme every day alike. Let each be fully conveyed in his own mind. And then you will see again, when we see in the Bible, the Bible clearly teach that the chance of God is to be separated from the world. Let's see First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. See, as obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lack and in your ignorance. See, in the verse 14, see, obedient children, as we are children, his children, we have to obey. See, not conforming yourself to the formula as in your ignorance. In verse 15, there's a reason. But as he who calls you is holy, he who calls you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. In verse 16, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. The one called you and me, he is holy. And so you also be holy in all your conduct we see. That's what we see separation. Separation do not with the way we live, the way we conduct ourselves as the people of God. It is emphasis is on holiness because God has said, be ye holy, for I am holy, according to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. It's the most important element of this study's attitudes, how our attitudes, okay, how our behavior. It will see in the present context how we behave. And we see that uh, three scripture words of similar meaning about separation. I just want to share this one. Is it number one is when the Bible says God is holy, it means he is set apart from all his creation in righteousness. Because God is holy. The Bible says God is holy. And in number two, when we say the Bible is holy, we mean it is set apart from all other books. All other book. That's what we see. Number three, we see when we are taught to sanctify the Lord in our heart. This means we are to set God apart from our God. There's a God always asking you and me to be set apart because God is holy, that be holy. Then two expect to separation our life. Number one, we see. Processional separation. When we say processional separation, as we are in Christ, we have been set apart unto God in Christ. We see in the Hebrew chapter 10, verse 10, by that we, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, one for all. In Christ, we and I have been set apart unto God. It is our positional separation in Christ. And in practical separation as a Christian, I am to live as set apart unto God. Because we see in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 
15. But as he who called you is holy, you also holy in all you conduct. The way we conduct as we are Christian, right? We are to live as set apart unto God. Again, we see that two important direction about separation, as we know in that Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It is separation to the Lord and separation from ungodliness. We see in verse 1. I beseech you, dearful brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. In verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We do expect to separation our life, like two important direction of separation. And then next point we see in the basic of practical separation. Number one, basic of God nature. As we see the first Peter chapter one, verse 16. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. The basic of redemption, you will see about redemption. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, you see, whom ye have from God, and you are not your own? We are not our own because of we see in verse 20. For you were brought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. But we are not our own. God has paid a price for you and me. Therefore, we must glorify God in our body and in spirit, which are God. And number three, we see the basic of regeneration. And we see in the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, as we know, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, it is the basic of practical separation in our life. Finally, I just want to conclude in application. When we say separation, what did the Bible say about separation? Let me see. Biblical separation doesn't require Christian to have no contact with unbeliever. Okay, uh, it is not not to contact with unbeliever. Like uh, uh, like we'll see, white blood cell in our body that seek and destroy any invading virus. Separation keep the child pure and free from fall, teacher, and heresy. For that purpose, we are learning, we are studying about separation. When we say separation, no need to talk with a uh, unbeliever. That scripture doesn't say, let me see Jesus. We should befriend the sinner without partaking of the sin. Luke chapter 7, verse 34. Jesus also be a friend with a sinner, but he never act like a sinner. And let us let me see that Apostle Paul he expresses a balanced view of separation. That first Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 to 10. I just want to read only verse 9. Say, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep a company with sexual immoral people. See, not to keep company with 
Let me no need to act like as those people. We can friendship, but our behavior, our attitudes must not be like as those people in application. That's why you will see that in verse 10. Yet I suddenly did not mean with the sexual immoral people of this world. See? The last part we see. Sin, then you would need to go out of the world. The key is we see you would need to go out of the world. Mainly is talk about our behavior, our attitudes. Then finally, I just want to share. I would just want to conclude with Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. As we are a Christian, we must be set apart. Let me see. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bucket but on lampstand and give light to all who are in the house. Verse 15. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. In application. Let me repeat again. Biblical separation does not require Christian to have no contact with unbeliever. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you so much for sharing. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Brother Fang. This is um, it's very, very good. You know, I... I don't think I've ever heard uh, biblical separation before or that concept. I understand it. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about it. When you sent me the, the title, I didn't understand what you were going to talk about, but I totally get it and totally biblical. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be holy and I really enjoyed it. Um, there's actually a Bible verse I wanted to share, and it's in Second Chronicles chapter 20. This is where we see one of God's um, one of God's people join forces with with this world, with someone from this world, a wicked person. And we had read in First Corinthians that we should not be yoked up with with unbelievers or come in to to um, uh, be yoked with them. Well, here's an example of what happens in Second Chronicles chapter twenty, where someone uh, where someone who is you know, supposedly following God is yoking up with an unbeliever or someone that's very wicked. That's Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 35 through 37, NLT version. It reads, Sometime later, King Jehoshaphat of Judah made an alliance. See, they're yoking up with King Ahaziah of Israel, who was very wicked. Together they built a fleet of trading ships at the port of Arizon. So they, they, they created a business together. Verse 37. Then Eleazar, the son of Dedefuhu from Merishah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, and he said, Because you have allied, your, allied yourself with King Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy your work. So the ships met with disaster and they never put out to sea. So God destroyed their business because he joined forces with this world. And we're not called to do that. We're called to be set apart, to be a light. And like Brother Thanks says, yes, I can't leave the world. So we obviously have to befriend people, but don't act like them. So what does that mean? I go to work. We're going to be surrounded around unbelievers. I should be a light. I shouldn't participate in the things that they participate in. If they're all doing wicked things on the other hand they, if they want to hang out with me and participate in my time of bible study or my time of fellowship with other believers or 
or read the Bible while, on my break or whatever it is, and they want to participate with me, so be it. But the other way around, hey, let's go to a club, let's go to a bar, let's go do something wicked. That that, that isn't that, that isn't what we're talking about here. Or we should we should stay away from that. Or even attitudes. You know, today we have what we call Karens. People out there complaining. These women who complain or men who complain, and we have a word for it called Karens. I shouldn't be associated with that as a believer. You shouldn't see me out there complaining and 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 throwing a fit and 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 doing the things that the world does. If that's the case, then I'm just like them. I'm not set apart any. And so and same thing with sexual morality and every other sin. We're called to be set apart, to be different. So, Brother Thang, thank you so much for the reminder. I really, really enjoyed it. Yes, Brother Thang, great message. Um, great reminder of what uh, we are supposed to be separate from this world. And possibly you, you just mentioned that you never heard anyone talk about it. Well, therein goes the problem. <laughs> it's, it's, that it's not talked about in the church. You know, we uh, sometimes we seem to be oh, not to have too many too much problem in associating with non-believers. But it seems to be a problem with being uh, unequally yoked that in that area. We just seem to can't get it. And, um, you know, was, my daughter comes and she's talking about interested in some guy. I ask him, well, he's a Christian. That's it. Then the answer is, no, get rid of him. You know, like Pastor Kutcherman, get rid of the bum. But we don't do that. You know, we, we let our emotions and everything get involved, but we're not following what the word says. You know, we have, a, we have a friend that's uh, in a relationship with a guy. He's in church. He's not a Christian. He's just, he's just in there playing playing church. He's not a Christian at all. He's sexually immoral. And she goes, oh, I feel butterflies when I'm with him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the problem. We let our butterflies and everything get in the way of doing what the Word of God says. Uh, so that's uh, that's we are supposed to be set apart. We are not supposed to be of this world. You know, a Christian's talking about divorce. What does God say about that? You know, God hates divorce. And so um, we should even consider that. You know, there are there are situations where divorce is allowed, but if not, you're not in one of those situations, then you need to, you know, there's that triangle. I was talking about we have husband and wife on one end and, and the other end and God at the top. Well, you run into problems don't look at your circumstances, go to God. So um, that's what keeps us apart and separate from, from the world. And we are not, there's a great example you brought up in Second Chronicles. Others that we, we had our BSF study, we went over the people of the promised land and all, all those kings and stuff, they all made alliances, they married, you know, and God told them not to and, and all those things and a disaster happened. So, uh, but great reminder, brother thing, I pre that was good, keep seeing. The word is always good, but keeps you keeps you on track. Good message. Yeah, that was a very good message. You know, we are called to be separate, like it says in Second Corinthians chapter six, verse seventeen. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Do not touch their things or their filthy things, and I will welcome you. You know, I. Uh, used to be a DJ weddings and events and stuff. And I would see the pastors come into these weddings and marry the couple, but you would see them leave before they got into the parting at the, at the wedding ceremonies, you know, cause everybody's drinking alcohol, everybody's smoking. And that's exactly how it is. As Christians, we should always separate ourselves from that. You know, we don't compromise to the things the world does. We're not to be out there drinking and smoking. And uh, like I went to a, a Christian uh, concert with Phil Wickham and I'm walking up to my seat and stuff because I enjoy worship music. You know, it's something to do, something fun. And then I see they have alcohol for sale. People are buying alcohol and drinking at a Christian concert. And it's just like, wow, you know, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to separate ourselves from that. You know, so, yes, very good message right here. You know, because we are supposed to separate us from the things that this world does, you know, and not compromise. But, yeah, very good message. God bless. If um, Thank you for the message, Brother Thang. Um, praise God. Um, yeah, it, it, it is important. I think um, the whole uh, the whole concept, not just as a concept of biblical uh, separation, but um, practical, the practical application that you talked about all, of course, you know, with scripture, 
um, I think in the in the church today, the physical church, and then um, just the way you see the, the church being portrayed in the public, um, um, you know, on videos and social media, um, people are are very confused about what the church is supposed to be. Um, very often, you you know, you hear people saying, you know, oh, well, oh, well, don't judge, you know, good good job, brother. Um, and it's not, and and they're talking about people who are not, um, who aren't aren't true believers, or if they are, they're they're very immature because they're they're still living these lives um, in sin, um, and so it's very it's very confusing. And I know um, of the actual uh, true church of the you know the true gospel that's being preached. It's probably below ten percent of physical churches. It's probably lower than that, but it's probably less than that, right? Where there's actually a true gospel. So just like when um, Pontius said he'd never heard a sermon on biblical separation, Brother Daryl, I think, said he hadn't either. I don't, th I don't think I have. Um, and that, that, like Brother Daryl said, that's a problem, right? It should be something that's being preached more, um, you know, but the the preachers, especially in America and probably in some other places, um, they don't they don't want to offend people. They want to, um, you know, they want people to show up. It's num it's numbers, right? We had you know fifty new people showed up or hundred new people showed up. It's people in the seats um, rather than preaching a a true pure gospel. So what they're doing is they're uh, they're preaching a soft message very often, and yet people are coming right. Because maybe the maybe the preacher is very um, very charismatic, you know. Oh, he's a great speaker, or he's this or that. So people are coming because they want to hear these people speak. But but it's not it's not the Holy Spirit that's bringing them. So to the true church, it's the Holy Spirit that's that's going to call people and draw people, probably much slower and in much smaller numbers, right? They're not for the most part they're not going to come in droves. Maybe sometimes if there's a revival, people might, but usually. The Holy Spirit will call people one at a time. Um, so everything, um, wonder, wonderful message, and everything you uh, that you talked about, it really reminded me of Psalm one, uh, Psalm chapter one, starting in verse one. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So. What does that mean if you're meditating on the law of the Lord day and night? It's always in your mind. You're always thinking about it. It's not the very last thing that you think of or consider in every situation that, that you get into. Um, maybe it's a conflict, but but every situation you're going to say, um, you know, what, what is what is God saying in his word about this? You know, how, how should I behave? How should I act? And then verse three says, he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither and in whatever he does, he prospers. Um, so great message, brother. And I have to tell you, I think you've been um, in our group for maybe three years. Maybe it's been a little bit longer than that. Um, and this is very, this is less important, but when you first uh, joined our group, you were very difficult uh, to understand and your English has improved um, incredibly. And so I just wanted to let you know that as well. Praise God for the study. Yes, I I don't know if you guys can hear me fairly well. Yeah, we can uh, hear I'm you. Sorry if you guys hear my I can hear you. my car in the background. I'm driving. Oh damn. <laughs> but oh, were you talking, Matthew? I'm sorry about that. No, no, no. You go ahead. I'll go after you. Sorry, my headphones aren't on my head. They're around my neck, and I can kind of hear. Um, I can hear you guys, but not completely. Um, but, um, yeah, I agree with Lauren that your English has improved immensely. I can I can hear you without – I can understand you without having to, to try and pick and choose what I think you're saying. And it's Just shoot if we don't understand, it. Brad. Huh? We don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just, I'm just kidding. 
Yeah. And uh, the message also is, is great, great biblical separation. I, I do agree with you completely. You specifically went in, we're speaking about how we are in the world. And it doesn't mean that, um, you know, God calls us to be set apart from the world. It does not mean that we cannot go not being in contact with sinners. You know, we're, 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 I'm at, we're at work most of the day, every week, for those who aren't working at home. I'm at work all the time with people who are letting unwholesome talk come out of their mouth, who are pointing out to me uh, how nice a woman looks, and I have to not pay attention to them, who are slandering uh, all the time. And I have to, um, as soon as... As soon as I'm choosing to get involved with that, that's when I'm not being biblically separated. Uh, or, for example, I believe your name is Lance. You know, as soon as I'm choosing to get drunk along with people, because that's what it says in the word not to do, do not get drunk, then that's when I'm becoming unbiblically separated or yeah that's the one i'm choosing not to become a set apart from the world yeah, as soon as i'm choosing the sin the way the world does but um that's what we as brothers and sisters have to choose to do obey his word and and do our best to stay away guard our hearts yeah I also want to just uh, come in by the thing, though, that with, also with the uh, language improvement, just your steadfast dedication. I mean, with all the hardships that you go through, you know, not having power and your country's in turmoil. I mean, we take for granted the comforts we have here. It's easy to sit down in nice, comfortable, heated, you know, homes with, you know, all the amenities and stuff. And, you know, I wonder how, how we would do with dealing with their situation, your circumstances. So that's, that's commendable to praise God, even regardless of whatever you're going through. And that, that's what the Lord calls us to do. And that's, uh, I, I don't know how I could deal with, I, well, I love the Lord, so I, I'd have to deal with it, but, uh, uh, praise God for your dedication, um, to come, even in the different time zones and I mean, all the difficulties in our ships, it's just commendable. So I'd praise you for that. Let me go ahead and close in prayer.